Alrighty guys, Xcon here, and welcome to my review of Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Uh, today is, uh, May the 4th be with you, uh, Star Wars Day, um, so I, I decided to do this, uh, review, kind of delayed it just a little bit, uh, I was gonna do it like a week ago, but then, I said, what the hell, I'll wait till now. Um, I also am running out my review for Star Wars Clone Wars Season 1, so uh, that might be up today, I'm not sure fully yet, but if not, it'll be up tomorrow on uh, Revenge of the Fifth, as they call it. Uh, but anyways, let's gonna start off the review. Uh, nope, my reviews, I do it in five categories. Um, right now, I'll... I don't typically do this, but I'll have the timestamps for... Uh, all of the um, categories, which is plot, cinematography, acting slash characters, rewatchability, then overall. Uh, I try to go with overall, I'll sum up all the other categories and add some stuff with side categories. So yeah, anyways, starting off the plot, the, uh, the plot was a good bit predictable, uh, if you know. Knowing the outcome, pretty much, and, uh, to the, uh, film, because, you know, they're, you knew that they were going to be successful with getting the Death Star plans, so, you know, and, you know, some of them might not make it, so, yeah, but, you know, it was a bit predictable there, so, you know, um, and that's the main plot of the film, so, yeah, I'm, and it was a neat, I guess, newish story to the Star Wars universe. Um, and a good start to the Star Wars story films. Um, but yeah, anyways, so uh, plot will get an 8 out of 10. Uh, cinematography felt uh, a lot like the uh, original trilogy. But the, basically, you know, takes place like days. It started, like, I believe, like, just a couple days before, uh, A New Hope. So that did, you know, obviously bring the feel and this look of the, uh, movie, uh, very similar to the original trilogy. And the, the battle scene, um, the scenes were, you know, pretty cool, uh, seeing, uh, you know, that stuff, and definitely at the end of the movie, at the Battle of Scarif, and, uh, then, you know, the Vader, you know, lightsaber scene, um, was really cool, but one thing that stuck out, and was just bad, even though the character wasn't in the movie for that long, was Grand Moff Tarkin being his, at least his face, uh, being CGI. Which, uh, there was a character at the end of the movie, which I'm, you know, fine with being CGI, not a major character to the film's plot that much, more of a cameo. Grand Moff Tarkin really wasn't a cameo, so, uh, yeah, um, you know, uh, just having him CGI didn't make much sense to me. They got a guy who looked like him, you know, I, and he, you know, the voice was him. Basically, everything else was, a, other than the CGI face, was a completely different guy. Uh, the only thing you need to do, I believe, the guy had, you know, black hair. All you need to do is dye his hair gray, and then, boom, you would have had, not had to use CGI, but they still decided to use CGI. So anyways, that, that knocks off two points for this category because of the awful use of CGI. So anyways, 8 out of 10. Uh, now moving on to acting slash characters. Uh, you know, uh, typically I talk more about their character. And if I like them, that means they were, you know, did good at the acting part. Um, but anyways. Some uh, some characters I uh, liked were K2SO, the droid. 
which, you know, really isn't, um, well, um, I guess, a big character to plot, but, you know, not, like, a human character, so, you know, but, uh, two other characters I did like were, uh, Chirrut and, uh, Baze, uh, which they just recently got a book, uh, so yeah, um, and, uh, but, like, Jin and Cassian and or and, uh, like, we're so chronic. And, uh, I really didn't care about their character at all. And then there's, uh, Bodhi, which I hear, you know, more of a, you know, supporting character. Then there is, uh, Sagiera, um, Which, you know, he, he really wasn't that important either, that much, so, you know. I do feel like with the books they did release, uh, with, uh, there's Catalyst, uh, Rogue One, uh, novel, um, which I know goes in the backstory of, uh, Galen, Urso, and Urso and Krennic, uh, and there's the, uh, recently, just a couple days ago, um, the, uh, Guardians of Wills, uh, which goes in the shooting days, and then there's, uh, on the same day, uh, Rebel Rising, which goes into a story about Jyn or so, and between the prologue and the main part of the movie, so, yeah, and that also has some soggy air in it. It was also in the Clone Wars and Rebels. Um, so, you know, it. I mean, it's somewhat. Eh, I guess. Um, like, you know, because you need to read. To really, you know, get a lot of these side characters and whatnot. You need to read books. Obviously, Cassian Andor and doesn't have a book, so, you know. You know, tell you the truth, he probably had the most interesting uh, backstory. Because you know, he has been in the fight since he was six years old. But, you know, anyways, characters I really didn't. Pretty much most of them I really didn't care for, so. Yeah, he, he's not some fun characters with K2SO and like Chirrut. Um, other than that, uh, you know, not all the characters are that great. But anyways, characters will get an 8 out of 10. Then the rewatchability, I'm just going to say 9 out of 10. Uh, I do recommend watching New Hope directly after this. Uh, but yeah, anyways, moving on to the overall, uh, movie I've watched about three times now. Uh, the first time was in the uh, movie theater. The second time was uh, when it came out a month ago on Blu-ray. And the uh, third time was today. Um, recording, today I'm recording this. Um, tell you the truth, I fucking loved the movie when it came out in the theater. I thought it was better than Return of the Jedi. And then I uh, watched it again and then I'm like, eh. I don't like it as much anymore, and I realize the main reason I liked it is because of just the, uh, look and whatnot of the movie, but with CGI characters, it kind of ruins it, which is one thing I, I always hated, the, uh, Grandma Tarkin, um, but, you know, um, But yeah, um, which, uh, strange, because I, The Force Awakens, I thought was going to be, like, when I was watching the theater, it was, it was like an 8 for me, um, but now see, I ended up giving it a 9.5, after watching it, like, 10 times, because I was starting to really like the movie, and realized, it, you know, got over the fact that it was a, a New Hope remake. 
just kind of sucked, but you know, it's really is remaking a movie I like, so you know, that even though this had an original story, is kind of you know predictable, like The Force Awakens, but and you know, just so uh, overall, I didn't like really that some like kind of you know uh, CGI characters which really ruined the movie and then uh find the characters I really didn't like kinda like the Force Awakens, so yeah. Um and another thing was at the uh, beginning of the movie there was a lot of jumping around from planet to planet. Uh that really didn't bother me that much as it bothered a lot of people. But you know it is what it is and then uh also I like uh I were, uh, James Earl Jones' uh, voice for uh, Vayner really isn't there as, like, much. He, 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 obviously, James Earl Jones, and it's been 40 years since the original, and what, like, 34 since uh, Return of the Jedi, so. And, like, you know, like, the time of the release of this movie, I guess, it was, like, Somewhat. A little bit, uh. Couple months. But yeah, and what? Last time he did it was at the. And, uh. Or wait, no, no. He did it in Rebels Season 2. I did not watch Rebels, uh, Season 2, so. I haven't watched Rebels at all. Uh, so I don't know if. If he sounded like normal Vayner. And they just got him on a day he was sick or something like that. I don't know. You know, it, it, it wasn't there that much, but that's something I'm not going to take points off of. It. It's obvious that stuff happens when you get older. Uh, I'd, that might be something I'll, you know, won't say as much if I uh, won't really care as much anymore if, if his voice was fine in Season 2 of Rebels or in the Futures voice is a little bit more fine, but yeah, anyways, uh, so Rogue One, I'll give that, oh, uh, one thing, uh, the soundtrack, I really did like the, uh, music to the movie, uh, being, however, without John Williams for, what, the first time, really, other than, like, the Clone War series and went on, I believe, let me see, didn't he do John Williams do Clone Wars movie? No, so I was here the first actually real movie uh, that he didn't do the uh, score of. So, so yeah, I I did feel like it. You know, it was good. I liked the uh, soundtrack to it. Um, obviously, music from like the original trilogy that might have used in some occasions, you know, it was obviously by him, but most of the time it was new music, and sometimes it's kind of, you know, a little bit, you know, different, but yeah, um, that was one, th I, I didn't like that, but anyways, sorry, 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 that's great, uh, but anyways, I did, I feel like Rogue One was alright, uh, so how I give uh, Rogue One a Star Wars story, an eight out of ten. But anyways, I've been the XCon. May the Force be with you.